Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, so I'm gonna run this probably a couple times. Erica did a really cool technique where she built up, I don't know if you can see this or not. You wanna hold it where I can see it really good? Okay. Three dimensional piece with working with a UV resin and then we painted micas on it and then it turned out like this. And this is my take on it. And so we're doing that bigger scale today. <laughs> I had too much fun last night. So we're working on that literally bigger scales like so. So that's the plan. I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer so I can see it. Because mm -hmm. I'm blind. That. Hi, Diane and Jerry. Hey, Rick. So we have a new studio set area. Doesn't it look good? Mikey and I have been working like dogs. And I'll show you that at the end of the video. <laughs> we literally moved everything from the left side to the right side. And then back again, it, you know how it is when you clean up a mess, you make a humongous mess. You probably have to do it so it just snorted. <laughs> I probably have to do it several times. Um, I hadn't actually unpacked completely in my studio yet. It was probably maybe about two thirds unpacked and then some of it was just shoved on the shelf, just kind of storing it for a bit. So that's really exciting news because we worked on it since what, Friday? Yep. The Friday all weekend long, solid. Oh, but um, I'm excited because it looks really good and yeah more happening back here too so I'm yeah stoked. You're, you're stuck too yeah. you're Mikey's excited and he has own, his own little area for electronics and stuff like that oh his own little cart too it's <laughs> covered with construction <laughs> stuff at the moment though well you know we have to install stuff so you know hey <laughs> let's see hey Julie you're lurking while you're editing? I know, editing takes a bit, doesn't it? Hey, BB. Oh, BB from Greece. Uh, Joanne's here. And Lynn's here. Hello, hello. And Linda's here. Hey. Okay, so I'm going to show you again. So, Erica and Ours Till Death. Um, I think we both watched the same video, and I can't find it now. Um, I think it was Steve's Arts and Crafts that put it out. He does a lot of resin projects, like in molds and stuff like that. And I saw it where he did the little drops on a silicone mold and thought it was really, really cool. And then brushed it with micas and then um, poured resin on top of it. You pulled it out. And it was like, oh, I ha that has possibilities. And then I started a project in, in my mind and partially in the studio. And then Erica went and did it on acrylic blanks. And then my mind went boom. So, and this is the start of a couple different things. So this is what the back of it looks like. And this is one of her coasters. Can they see that clearly? Here, back it up a little back it up a little bit. Uh-huh. Okay. And raise it up. Here, let me hold it. You want to do it? Okay. I'll hold it. I want you to see the texture on that. And that's just a buildup of resin. Okay, it's focused on me right now. So you might want to get it right here. That was with you holding it. Oh, that was with me holding it? Okay. So this is with it after I've dusted it with micas. And these are with some chameleons in there. And then it's just black spray paint on the back. So I haven't done anything fancy. In fact, I would probably do a couple coats of res a uh, couple coats of black spray paint. But I am like really excited about this. This turned out so cool. <laughs> so we're gonna do a big scaled. I've got one of her large rounds. This is a 12 inch round, I believe. And then I literally printed out this thing, like, poster size. So I printed out the same image, but a larger size. And what I'm doing now is I'm just refining the lines because I found that when I was drawing out the lines, it kind of got hard to see when you're tracing something. So I want to try and draw it out simply with black lines and see if that makes it a little easier. And what I did is I also transferred this bottle here, which is UV resin, and it's cured with a UV light. But I transferred it to a little needle applicator bottle, which is hiding in my little box here, just so it doesn't get exposed to light right now. 
and it does work. They they give you with a little needle applicator bottles. Of course, this is now stuck in here. Um, a little funnel, and it it works out pretty well. So, and I think my bottles are maybe the two ounce size, so it's easier to squeeze them. And I thought that might work better with the UV resin because I figured the, the liquid might be a little bit thicker. So do you want to point it down so they can see what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm just drawing it out. A couple different ways. It's like one, I was like trying to work with it art wise and how to play with it. And also how can I pull this off on a countertop? Ooh, you know, that would be like, okay. Wouldn't that be cool on the countertop? I mean, seriously? Having some kind of like texture like that, just just that would be really cool if I could pull that off. So that's where my brain's going. <laughs> I'm gonna rotate you. You're gonna you're gonna rotate me? Yes. Hmm. So I'm just getting the basic. Mind if I move it for a little bit? I do not mind. Go ahead. I'll just keep on talking while you're. Oh, wait a minute. You're gonna move me? Yes. You gonna move me? Okay. Go ahead. Beep. Beep. Are you beeping? Perfect. You're beeping. Why is this on? I, because you made some kind of movement underneath it. Stop. <laughs> Stop me. Stop turning the light on. Okay. <laughs> so my UV light, I did have a little handheld thing, but instead of doing that, this is going to go off again. I've got one of these little lights like you would use for manicures, but this is the pedicure version, which is a lot wider mm -hmm. and it works really good with artwork. Because you're usually done with a larger surface, and who has time to keep moving it around, right? Okay, so I'm hoping that How's this. That? How's what? Yeah, this seems to be working out pretty good. And they can see all the stuff I'm getting into. Cool, cool. Okay, so it's mostly on this side, not much on this side. Okay, got it. I'm hoping it's going to be another level. I sent a uh, little video over to Erica. I'm like, look what you started last night. And she's giving me a hard time. She's like, yeah. Of course, you had to up me. You know. <laughs> she goes, I had to go all arts and crafts. And you had to make something artistic out of it. And I'm like, well, you know, I just, I, I was just playing. <laughs> so. This design was just pulled off of a, a resin tray I did. Which I call my turquoise dragon. Okay, I think, nope, almost done. I'll leave you to it. You gonna leave me to it? Yes. Okay. I'll be listening to the live, so. Okay. Holla at me. Ah! Now, let's just extend that line out. Oh yeah, I gotta get the TVs. Okay, so I should be able to see that a little clearly, a little bit more clear. There, there we go. Better English. It's got that all the way down. Okay, so these are their acrylic rounds. They've got paper on both sides. And when you're doing, like, they originally designed, or at least for Erica and Jeff's purposes, to pour resin on top of it. You peel off the paper, pour the resin on this first layer. When the resin has cured, you peel off the back and it's supposed to be easy to clean, especially with all the drips and stuff. I've been having fun with trying to figure out different ways of using it. Like you can do drawings on here, then pour the resin, and then when you peel it off both sides, you see the drawing with the resin design in the background. That's kind of cool. So this is just one of those things. And it's very satisfying to feel it. So. so let me get the. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and get both sides peeled off because I need to see through it. Eek. Okay, there we go. We got it going. Bear with me if I holler at Mikey. It's only because he's on the computer working on the website, but he's listening to. 
the uh, lies so that way if I need them, he'll he'll come and run it. Did I really say that? I did say that. <laughs> okay, laughing at myself. All right, I'm hoping that this is going to work out okay. Let's see. What I did last night is I kind of put it in a position. Oop, I'm already seeing a line there that I didn't do. I can bounce that on my cups. Let's see. Just in case. Okay. Dry, dry. Okay. That way I don't have to worry about the position. I can just position it how I want to have it positioned. And actually I'm kind of liking that. Okay. And what I did is I taped it down with some blue tape just to keep it. Okay. Still, when your glue tape is happy with you and not holding up on itself. So what are you guys doing today? Our weather is kind of on that, you know, gave us a little tease of spring, but now it's kind of mucky and, you know, spitty kind of weather outside and kind of bleh. It's a good day for some naps. <laughs> but I'm not napping. I'm arting. Okay. So this is just some UV resin that I got off of Amazon. And I'm in a well-ventilated area. This stuff stinks. I'm going to be honest with you. It stinks. So if you're at all sensitive whatsoever, take precautions. Or definitely be in, if you're not... Then uh, be in a uh, well-ventilated area. If you can't, wear a respirator, definitely. I'm using definitely a lot, but bear with me. Okay. So as you see, it's a needle applicator bottle. I've probably got about this much resin in there. And I've got it taped off so it doesn't cure up because it is sensitive. Um, and usually when I'm messing around with a uh, UV resin, I'll put it outside when I'm completely done. And even if I've cured it and stuff under a uh, black light, I'll put it outside. All right. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Because if you can't, what I'll do is I'll get my key to change positions. But right now I'm just going on the outline. To get that started. I'm leaving just a little bit of a, a bead line. So basically what you do is you're using the UV resin to build up your colors with. And I will go in and add some more resin afterwards and then add another color. All right, let me see the comments, see if you guys can see. What is the strobe thing at the top of this? Oh, this is probably, oops, oops. <laughs> This has probably got a um, LED screen, which is going to be flickering. Um, but this is a uh, UV light, like you would use in uh, getting your nails done. But it's a, a special one for a pedicure, so it's got a wider base opening. And when my uh, resin is at a good spot, I'll basically, well, I'll just go ahead and do it now. I'll put it over and then run it for like 60 seconds. Um, and it'll cure the resin enough that I can move to another spot. So if I did a lot of work in this area and I don't want to mess it up, I can go ahead and cure it and then move and start working in another area. And then when I'm completely done, I'll go take it outside and let it fully cure out in the sun, which usually takes about three minutes. So we don't usually need a whole lot. 
I'm going to take that off and see how it, yeah, I can, I can touch it right now. So that's good. All right. And I'm hiding this thing under the table every time I bring it out. Can you guys see what I'm doing? I know you can see the table okay. I just didn't know if you could see the lines right now. And I'm not too worried about my lines being super straight because I'm going to have a very sketchy look. I got a phone call. Hopefully this live's not cut off. Hey, Mikey. Can you go ahead and come on up here? I'm going to go ahead and change the camera angle so that you can see it a little bit more from an angle. Because this clear stuff is not easy to see. Yes. Go ahead and change the cam camera angle and see if you can get what I'm doing a little bit easier. All right. I might need to set up another tripod. Okay. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Actually works out pretty good that way I can check it too. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and oops. Let's see how this angle does. Okay. Now go ahead and bring it in tighter. You already read my mind. Mm-hmm. How about that? Okay, nice blue lights. Bask in the glory of the blue. The blue? The blue. The or, blue. Or purple? Ultraviolet? Mm, yeah. It looks blue to me. It does look blue. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you, you sir. Me anything else? Okay. Just know that there's a delay. There's a delay? Yeah. I think about eight seconds before I hear it. Okay, no problem. Okay. Oh, there's a weird depth thing going on when you go to um, follow a tracing. You're going through the depth of the... You know, it's like um, a glass and you know how you put a straw or a spoon in there and then it becomes, uh, what is it, refracted or whatever, where it looks like it's broken. It's kind of like that when tra following a trace line on top of acrylics. All right. This can go a little faster. Just go in on that. Here we go. So this could be a cool project, like if you have um, a kid's drawing, you know, and you want to taste your chase. Trace, trace, trace 
your kid's drawing or even a message or um, say a little note that your your parents gave you when you were little or something like that. You know, things that are keep keepsakes. This could be a really cool way of doing that and keeping that around or even a little love note. Maybe even a logo. Ooh, maybe that's what I should do over my little set area. So Mikey and I got this idea. It's like, we need to do something up here. It's kind of a mess with me in the studio. And yes, it was a hot mess. Um, and so part of it was storage. And the other part was one of some kind of kind of a uniform look to the place. So my thing was, is like, it's a working studio. I'm doing artwork. I'm making a mess. And he's like, yeah, but we got to make it look nice. So our compromise was when you have a lot of messy stuff and this much, I know, um, it always looks better behind doors, meaning cabinet doors or things like that. Things that are closed off that you can hide the mess. I should probably look up. Hey, Kathy and Carrie. Oh, I got quite a few people in here. Jeez, hey. No problem. <laughs> so I've got a whole wall, which is really nice now, of like little bitty cabinets and drawers to hide all my stuff. Which I'm super stoked on. Because storage is always a good thing with artwork. That's all the art supplies. Okay. So, let me give you guys a, a recap because this is not the right thing. <laughs> Alright. So, Erica did a, a live the other day. And I think we saw the same video where we did mess around. Uh, the person messed around with UV resin. But it was on molds. And it created a texture thing. Well, she did on her acrylic grounds and then paint them with chameleons. And so I had to go to the next step and play with it. So now I want to do something big. So that's what we're doing. All right. So we're getting there. I think everything is safe where I can touch it. So I'm worried about laying my hands down because I don't want to get and smear all the resin, because that's not fun. I already get sticky enough. All right, here's a pro tip for you guys. If you have a hard time with an angle, just change the angle to where your hand naturally moves. So my hand just curves really well this way. And I just go ahead and change it out. The angle that my hand works better. So we built in a little cubby hole for smog too, so she can hang out with us in the studio. Or she was already kind of doing that anyway. Okay. All right, so I basically got my line going on here and I've got everything outlined. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make this outline a little bit thicker. And this is about bringing in texture to the piece. And this won't take long at all. But I am darting my head to the left and to the right just so I can see where I've been. 
and where I'm going because I am working with mainly reflections right now. It is weird. And this is why I wasn't worried too much about any of my lines being wobbly or not. Because one, I could smooth it out when I go to thicken up the lines a bit. And with the scratchy lines, they will get disguised too. So these, uh, this UV, you know how you mess around with hot glue guns and it comes up with those little stringy bits everywhere? Like little uh, spider web lines. This kind of does the same thing, but it's just a little bit different. So even if you put like, if you really look close at it and you put a little drop down, you always have drop and you'll have a very fine, thin, thin line to it, like a little tail. So if it's going to be that way, I have learned to go ahead and design that way. And besides that, I like the scratchy line anyway. All right, I'm gonna move this one tape over just a little bit. And my scratchy's gonna run into it. For those of you just joining in, I'm using UV resin, and I'll put a link in the description below, but it is cured with UV light. And this stuff, okay, it stinks. I'll be honest with you, it stinks. Um, so work in a well ventilated area, which I am. Um, and if you're at all sensitive, take precautions. Be smart. I say always take precautions if you're sensitive. I mean, even from one brand to the next, I mean, if you're not, you know, don't have any reactions with acrylic paints, you know, but one brand will set you off. It's weird, they could have this one ingredient. Uh, Jeff was uh, had no trouble using a lot of resins, but he would work with, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and cure this a little bit. It's getting to the point I don't know where to put my hands. Uh, Jeff had worked with, meaning Eric and Jeff, uh, worked with a lot of different resins with no problem. And then they were using art resin for a little bit and he got a rash with art resin. He was sensitive to something they had in there um, and had to wear um, sleeves uh, like all the way from his fingertips up to his elbows or mid, uh, mid arm, uh, upper arm, whenever he used that product. And that was before uh, they found out about stone coat and has had no problems with stone coat. Do that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking that, that that this texture would be really cool on a countertop. But you got, when you pour resin over top of a solid color and I build up texture like this, it's just gonna go flat. And you're not, you're gonna lose the texture. So maybe one of those where I have to play tone on tone with the blacks or you know, something like that. I've got my other hand hiding under the table with the uh, the bottle so that I don't <laughs> accidentally cure the resin inside the bottle. I 
think I got one more area and then I'm good. You see how this thing is really handy with our work and you just bounce it on top. And if it's anything I'm worried about putting down here, I'll rig up some cups on the side so that white it can balance on top of the cups. doing I just want to double check okay all right <laughs> I was getting to a point where I my hand might be touching a lot of things so I didn't want to do that so I was thinking about my colors uh, about messing with some chameleons on the first part with the line art and then fill in some of the areas to give up, build up a little contrast with maybe some solid colors. Oh, I should have picked out a white or something like that. the uh, like the horns and the the teepees Just do some brushy stuff. Okay. I think I'm at a point where I can lose the paper. The paper is in the day. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Oh, I just put together some playlists. I've been getting a lot of requests on the Clara Marvel as far as like tutorials and such, um, especially people who are doing countertops. And um, I have put together a playlist on my uh, YouTube so that way it's kind of like a class of all the, uh, the alcohol dye techniques and such. So hopefully that will be helpful. I need to do a video on the breakdowns of how to mix that stuff up so that way it's really easy for people to there we go I think that works all right time to hide it again let's see So I'm just hitting it for about 30 seconds on the curing time. I know that I'm going to be going back th over this over and over and over and over again. So I'm not too worried about the curing time. It's definitely going to get hit with plenty, plenty of exposure here. Let's see if I can move it anymore. The cord, I'm kind of really stretched out here. And this will pre kind of expose everywhere where you see the light hitting it. We'll get some exposure. And the next step, I'm going to do some chameleons. So, do I do grumpy, which is a kind of a blue-purple shift? Or 
Dalmatian Obsession, which is kind of a blue-green shift. Let's see, I'm gonna do it right here. So what are your votes? Blue purple or green blue? I think either one of those will be pretty. Purple shift? Well, that was like an overwhelming purple shift. Alrighty. And now what I use with uh, mica powders is just little makeup brushes. They work out great because they're super soft and you can get them in different sizes. So I usually brush off the area with this big one, but I apply it with the itty bitty one. And yes, I'm going to be all sparkly by the time I'm done with this project. Okay. Off. Thank you. Now I'm going to hide my bottle in the box. And it's just a needle applicator bottle that I've added my UV resin to. Okay. All right. Grumpy it is. And these are the Too Faced Chameleons. You can see it there. Let me see if I'm on camera. Hopefully I am. I have to wait for the delay. <laughs> yep, you can see it. Yay. Okay. So all I do is tap it with the brush and just dust it over top of it and work it in. It'll seem almost transparent, but it will work. It will get in there. And when black is applied to the back of it, it's stunning. Absolutely stunning. So this is going to be the color of my line art. And then I'll do some more UV resin with the, the bigger bottle for filling in some of the shapes. You know, I could get in trouble with this technique. This, this is just fun. If you've ever um, messed around with gold foils or silver foils or any of those kind of color foils, you can buff them in with a brush just by going in circles or you kind of pushing that stuff in. But always do it with a soft brush. So you're kind of doing the same technique here. So that way you're getting in all the cracks and crevices. This is gonna look good. All right, so the next step for me after I get this done, I'm gonna brush this off. I'm gonna work in some detail lines, meaning some of the little hatch marks. And I'll do that with a different chameleon color. And then I'll start filling in blanks. I think that'll be my next step. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, Christy. Hey, Sue. Good day, mate. I'm sorry. I always get a kick out saying that. I can't mate. <laughs> okay, I think I got everything covered. All right. I'm gonna work this in real good with this brush. 
And some of it's going to stick to the acrylic and not want to come off. And I'm not worried about it. Because it didn't on the other one. It just it had these little faint bits. Um, and I'm okay with that. Let's see. I'm going to get a trash can here. See if I can brush off some of the excess. Some. Maybe. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> I think there's a bit of a static charge when it comes to the acrylics. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see. So there's already getting to be a little bit of a three-dimensional look to the piece. <laughs> this is fun. <coughs> Okay, let me see. I'm going to try and kind of line it up. And the only reason why I'm lining it up right now is just it makes it easier to see the shape. <laughs> that is the only reason. Okay, so we got that done. I'm going to quickly do my little patch marks in there that I do on my dragons. Which won't take me that long because I won't get too carried away. I know this is me saying I'm not going to get too carried away. Okay, come on. There we go. See where I can place my hand. Now when you use the needle applicator bottle, you're always going to get that drip in the tail if you drag it at all. So either design so it works for you or find another way of applying it where that doesn't bother you. All right, I'm getting to a point where I cannot move without screwing that up. Okay. Could you do this on glass? Hmm. You know, it's probably easy to really test this on glass and just by doing a little piece, like, you know, go get a, a glass you're not crazy about. I'm looking around to see if I got any glass now. I'm like, mm, wait a minute, I do have some glass. Put it in the box. May I have to hold this one? Nope. This is what I was talking about setting up cups. Sometimes it's just easier. Yeah, a mirror would be cool. Now you may have, I, mm. the only thing I wonder about is when you're dusting it with the powders, okay, the powders get everywhere, so you have to be real careful about removing it. You can you remove it with tape and brush and or cloths and stuff like that, but you may have to, you may have to spray the micas on top of that just to keep it from brushing off. So yes, it's definitely staying there. Let's see. We're doing an experiment. All right. 
Now this is probably going to work just fine. Adding this on here. Okay. So I'll stand up just so I can see what I'm doing. So the only thing, obviously, I would want to seal that. The other thing I'm wondering about is will it peel off? And yes, it will. There are some clear bonding primers that you can do, but um, well, now I have a little curly cue. <laughs> so no, I wouldn't recommend that on glass. Good way to find out, you just try it out. All right, did it move? I think it moved. Kind of moved a little bit. All right, where did I leave off at? Right there, okay. Try to move from the outside in so it's not so difficult for me. I almost always have some kind of visual element that helps me. In other words, I kind of look ahead to know which way I'm going to go. Oops, I got to concentrating again. It is going to be a new kind of hash mark. It's like little tadpoles. Tad mark. There we go. Okay. They look like little tadpoles. All right. One thing I want to do is a little, I've been doing these little dots lately on my dragons and I really kind of am digging it. Yeah, it kind of gives them a little freckly kind of look, but it also kind of gives a little scale look. So I thought I'd add a couple in here. What I'm seeing is every time I put a dot down, I'm not just getting one dot, I'm getting like three because they're all the reflections going through the acrylic. It's just crazy. Can you hear it going clunk, clunk, clunk? Good. It didn't take long to do these kind of details. This certainly does 
make a difference having those kind of details. Now you can really see the little fine strings. I don't know if it's the tap that's making them happen or me pulling the applicator bottle up quick. I'll have to bring you in closer so that you can see it. But it's just a real fine little tail. I got that saying in my head, I hide the bottle, but you guys know the phrase. <laughs> I know the light's not big enough. I need a bigger light. <laughs> I'll have to hold it for a little bit. It's not touching, don't worry. I've got it held up a little bit. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is the Dalmatian Obsession on the hatch marks and the little dots. You know what I should have done? I should have done a couple of dots in the eye. That would have been cool. Oh dear. I have to go add some. <laughs> I thought I was done. I lied. All right, let's see. I'm waiting for the dots to start. There we go. Okay, just a couple. Oh, really? really? You can get much bigger lights. Cool. All right, almost done. This is about as exciting as getting your nails done when they put it under the light. It's like, okay, I'm bored now. All right. Oh, dear. Okay, good. I was worried I couldn't open it. All right, so I'm gonna use that Dalmatian Obsession for the rest of it. And then that way we'll get a little bit of different colors in there. It'll show, trust me. I warned Mikey ahead of time that we might be, um, no Mikey, I don't need you. <laughs> that we might be going outside to do the spray painting outside on this. I want to try some with um, Erica's um, Chameleon Flakes. She's supposed to be getting some more in or putting some into um, uh, the website soon. I think she's got them in and she just haven't put them in the website. But the flakes are st stunning. 
I mean, it's like whatever you can get from this chameleon, what it looks like here, it's like chameleon on steroids. You know, it's really pretty stuff. And I would go for that in a heartbeat if I was doing this again. Let's see. I don't think I got down here. No. Oops. I just poured it on my piece. I did not mean to do that. Let's see if I can pick some of it up. All right, I'm almost there. Have you ever done a white on white piece before, like an art piece or a project? It gets kind of interesting. It really makes you think about how things are laid out and contrasts or textures, you know, subtleties. It's a good, um, exercise in design. Oh, really? Evan and Kate? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that sucker was, yeah, really powerful. <laughs> I don't know if I want the laboratory version. Let's see. Just really buffing these in. I might see if I can um, rub off some of them. Let's see. I have a fine layer in some areas, and that's okay. Oh, good gravy. This is so pretty. I already have a soft spot for chameleons. This is not helping. <laughs> Was this on the back side? Well, I explained some things. Okay. All right. Can you see? See, I'm getting some of the texture already. Ooh. Fine. Okay. Let's pull up some big texture. Sunglasses required. Yeah, I bet. All right. I pulled in some bonus colors and some interference. Uh, gold. So I thought I'd do the uh, gold on the teeth and then start to pull in some bolder colors like on the scales and um, his spikes and such. So we are going to use it straight from the bottle this time. Hopefully I can do this okay. Okay, bottle comes out a lot. Alright. Oh, please. I'm going to get something to I'll spread that around with. Oh, a skewer. That would work better. Just for shaping this stuff up a little bit better. Okay, and only because it came out in such a blob, I'm going to go ahead and hit it. Yeah, it is kind of like stained glass painting. So 
got some more in here. It comes out like a lot out of the bottle. I like my little bottles. A lot more control. Okay. That's too bad. That works. Okay. You know, it's cool that I found the outlines because, or I did the outlines first. Because I can actually feel it with the um, skewer. Kind of push it up to the outline. Now this stuff I wouldn't consider it self-leveling. Only because as soon as UV light gets on it, it, it cures. And you just don't know if there's any UV light coming from any outside sources. Like I have an open window here and there's bound to be some leakage obviously from outside sources. All right, get over. There we go. That's good. Let me do these guys. Cool thing about this is I can deal with this just one big old shape. And this is kind of like layering colors. The first color that you put out is the first color you're going to see when you flip it over. So you have to think like that. So that's why I did my chameleons first because I wanted the chameleons to be on the outline. All right, I'm definitely going to hit this with a light. All right, let's see. There to there. Yes. Yeah, you can't do it on glass. I don't know what... And Erica just did a piece with glass. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. She just, Her live that was at 2 o'clock today, she just did a big old vase where it had a whole bunch of it on glass. So, yeah. Hers might be peeling up too. stuff. There's that and that. I think we'll do the horns. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had a cough because of like allergies and stuff for like the last month it feels like. No, but basically it's been about a week and a half I think. Not fun. Well, this is a bunch of UV resin I'm putting down. All right, I am not squeezing anymore. I'm just using the bottle to kind of push it around a bit. See if I can go up to this edge, but not over. A little bit more. Okay. 
Yes, even with UV resin, you can get bubbles. But you can pick them up with the skewers. That's kind of weird. Okay. Cure that a little bit. Yeah, she did. Oh. Are you, wait a minute, Kathy, are you talking about me putting a design on the jar? Yeah, I did do that real quick and it peeled right up. So I'm wondering if, I, I bet Erica's peeled right up. But she also did some other bonding things where she added like an, uh, an acrylic base, you know, with the color art colors and then spray paint. That might be enough glue to kind of like keep it in place. All right. So let's see. So I'm thinking of doing the teeth and the points and the horn with interference gold. Because I think that would be pretty. I think I probably picked up enough mica powders for the entire project. Let's see. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. So my other one that I did, I didn't have a bright color on there and I was like, it felt like it needed something to kind of make it stand out a little bit. So that's why I wanted to pick the interference color up. All right, close that up and brush this off. Like I said, we're going to have little bits everywhere. So if that's an issue, you may want to either mask it off or just take your time in removing it. I personally kind of like the little bits because it feels like stardust kind of stuff to me. Oh, good gravy. So it's getting some of the brighter colors in there. All right. So the last little bit, I was thinking about putting some color in his eye right there. And then these little scales that go down the neck. So, and then after that, it's black. <laughs> Cause I can't handle it anymore. Okay. So I have a color that's appropriately named Dragon's Breath. I also have one called Purple Haze. And then I have a blue-green color. Put your votes in now. The purple, the red, or the blue-green. You want to put a dark paper behind it? I could do that. Let's see. I bet this would work. This is tracing paper big time all over it. Oh, please.
is. You can kind of get the, the shape that way. Cool. Cool, cool. Okay, let's see. Blue, green. Dragon, red, red, blue, green. Uh-oh. <laughs> we have a tie. All right, now. All right, Mikey, if you're listening, you got to be the tiebreaker. Red. Okay. Somebody else is, aha, beat you to it. Okay. We will do red. Let's see. I wonder if I can use my, I can. All right. Use my finger to kind of brush this off. That works really well. are going to ask questions. I'm going to be covered in glitter because I'm just wiping this on my shorts as I wipe it off. Okay. All right, let's fill this in. I don't think I've ever used this much UV resin before. I'm glad I went for the bigger bottles. Now, if you've never used UV resin, you can tint them with epoxy colors. Keep in mind, the darker the colors, like if I went and put a black dye in here, it would have a hard time uh, with the UV for the curing part uh, because it would have a hard time um, <sighs> penetrating that dark color. So you need to go with either transparent colors or just lighter tones. All right, I'm filling in all the dots. I'm just using the bottle right now is kind of a brush to move this stuff around. Why not? Because it works. My outlines created a natural dam, so it's kind of keeping that contained, which is really nice. So when I cure it for like 30 seconds, it still leaves, I guess, a little bit of a, I don't want to say sticky, but enough of a texture to it that the micas will ad adhere to it. And now I'm just looking for any bubbles, and they seem to be able to be picked out with a, a skewer rather easily. Here, there, there. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll give it a whole thing a good brush off with my fingers and before we spray down it, sprayed it with the spray paint there. All right, 
So let's get this color out. Most of my colors, I get them from America, but I'm sorry, this one kind of screamed at me and the name didn't help either with it being called Dragon's Breath. But it is kind of a chameleon. It looks very similar to, what is it, uh, Red Queen uh, from her Too Faced Chameleon line. Very similar color. But um, I use uh, Black Diamond a lot too. Not one of my go-tos, but I haven't had any troubles with them. So be very careful if you get uh, pigments off of Amazon. You just never know the quality that you're getting, and a lot of them have fillers in them. And so if that means that they have a lot of fillers, that also means you're not getting a whole lot of color and you have to double up and triple up the amount of product you use just to get the color you want. Oh, this is going to be pretty. So, Sue, what do you mean by put the uh, UV resin on the other side? Are you talking about exposing it, uh, the UV light to the other side of the um, dragon? Like the smooth side? Okay. Yeah, it's definitely building up a bit of a static charge to it. And that seems to be working. Okay. I want to know what my shorts look like. <laughs> If that works okay holy crap is going all right I'm bringing you down okay so you see those little bits there the little wiggly tails that's what I was talking about when you go to drip it you get a little bit of a tail there. But that is already a whole lot of fun. He's got me really zoomed in. <laughs> All right, let me back it up a little bit. Let me unzoom it, there we go. I think we're ready for some spray paint. What do you guys think? You know what? I totally didn't do the eye. Crud. Uh oh. I didn't do the eye. I can't believe I didn't do the eye.
Hey, Mikey. You want to go ahead and come on up here? Almost ready for spray paint. Don't do it. Is it raining outside? No. I hope not. But it is a little wet. Okay, that's fine. So there might be a chance. It's looking good. There we go. <laughs> See, that made all the difference in the world on the eye. Okay. I think we need to have some spray paint on. What do you think? All right, we moving outside? Yeah, we're going outside to spray paint because I'm not doing it in my house. Mm -mm. All Especially right. Especially black spray paint. Yeah, you got this. You're a lot better on the stairs quickly than I am. <laughs> well, you going to watch me go down the stairs? You I betcha. Get, move, shoot, be up with you. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> We're going on a trip. Hello. See my messy house first. Alright. You gotta grab a box. Uh Got a ton over here. Got a ton of boards over here. Looks interesting. Okay. Ah. Perfect. It's like it was made for it. I'm gonna double check to make sure I'm getting the right side. Yes, it smells as bad as you think it does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I kind of don't want to touch it for a bit. <laughs> Are we leaving in here? Uh, Next live showing it off? No, they've been hanging out for so long. Okay, okay, okay. All right, commit it. I'm going to commit. I can always fix it, right? Right? Totally. Ooh, look at that. Does that look good? Yeah. Here, you move around me. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Ooh, I like the red. And the, ooh, the gold interference looks cool, too. Right, I'm gonna lay this down and do it another light coat. And then leave it for a while. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna leave that overnight. Um, would recommend at least two coats if you do the black spray paint. If you do epoxy, just make sure you get to an, op an opaque level, and then I'll, the chameleon will work well. All right, going upstairs, and we're going to show off the studio, and then we'll wrap it up. All right. You first. I do well, I need a view. No, you first. <laughs> All right. Give me a 
hard time. <laughs> She's a little camera shy. It's okay. I'm a little camera shy. I don't do stairs very well. Okay, here, you give me that. Right. I take over. All right, guys, y'all want to see the studio? We've been working hard at it. Okay, so basically, most of the time I did lives, I was here, and then this was behind me. So everything you're seeing there, except for my drying, I'm out of breath going up the stairs. This is sad. <laughs> Most of the stuff that was over here was over on the other side. So we swapped it all, rearranged it all. So now we have a little bit more of a set design set up where those are cabinets. Top layer is mostly little drawers and bottom layer has a door to it so we can close off all the mess. So that'll be really helpful. I can put all my alcohol links. We got a little, le little ledges for the alcohol link. Yay. And then I got railing system that we, Mikey just installed this morning. It's got these little wires on them so we can hang up some artwork and stuff. <laughs> your, st <laughs> your studio is upstairs too. <laughs> and then I did this thing. I, I kind of got an idea for uh, hanging up my, I have these huge stencils. I mean, look at my hand compared to these things. And you get these little tags. They're plastic tabs and attach those to them and just hang them up on like little nails. Now I gotta get the thing back on the, okay. Stay. I'm being on the floor everywhere. My tumbler station is where I have all my colors for resin. This is my, drying rack there, my dust-free zone. And I have two work tables that I can go back and forth from. So super helpful on that part. And then my alcoholic cart. I finally got all my canvases organized. Look at that. It makes me happy. I got all my resin stuff together. And of course, what does every artist have but a lot of miscellaneous? These are projects I finished that I need to completely finish. In other words, do the backs, seal them up, things like that. Um, let's see. In this area here, it's all organized. Well, okay, I've got a couple boxes I still need to go through. But <laughs> I found in my other studio, I kind of set up this mock closet for all my stuff to go into. So that way I had a storage space and then I had a workspace and it helped me out product productivity wise. Also helped me clear my head out a little bit. So yeah, so those are all my dies for doing tie dies. That's fun. And then uh, different mediums and glues and uh, pouring mediums. I've got acrylics and stuff right here. These are a lot of different types of pens, erasers, pencils, stuff like that. And then all the stuff for mixing, alcohol ink in here as far as basic supplies. And then my alcohol ink paper there. I mean, just, it makes me happy. <laughs> so I can find my, and Mikey keeps dancing around. Why, you don't want people seeing your PJs? No. no. He's in his PJs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I cut out myself. <laughs> anyway, yep. So that's the studio we've been busting our tail on. And Smog, the studio kitty cat or the family kitty cat, has a spot right here by the window. And she also has a spot right there. So, yeah, we're good. Anyway, so let's see if I can do this right. All right. I'm going to answer, <laughs> see if I missed some questions here. Um, let's see. Sound like the big bad wolf, that's funny. You have three workstations, it helps. It really does. And I also like it because the tables are very lightweight and I can move them back and forth. I can connect them together. Mikey has a little station set up for his uh, electronics and computer and stuff and we got a little um, cart um, 
since I've got my glitters in the drawer now, he can have the glitter cart. Yeah, I had a glitter cart. I don't know if I should be embarrassed by that, but I'm just going to own it. I had a glitter cart. Anyway, so he now has that, and he can put his stuff in there, so that's good. How do you not get cat hair in your resin? Mm, I have. I will tell you. First off, I'm very, very careful in the beginning. Love it, love it, love it. But a lot of baker's racks will have plastic covers that fit, and this has a zipper in it, and it goes all the way down. So she can't get into this space at all. And I will close off this space if I know I'm doing any resin. So I usually don't have too much problems with hairs. Um, and if I do, I just sand them down, do the coat, or, you know, put the UTC on top of it. And that helps out too. So... You know, I don't know why pushing down on your mid thigh helps getting up, but I'll, I, you see people do that getting up from chairs and stuff like that. It's got to be something to do with leverage. Uh oh, bye, Sue. Your dog sheds a lot. Yeah, dogs can shed a lot too. I had a Labrador and oh, hair everywhere. Oh my gosh, there was so much hair. So, love her to death, but. Yeah, she should. So you, if you know you're going to have a sticky zone, if it's too much as far as you have too many dogs that you can't handle it or your cat does do a lot of shedding, um, you may have to have a no, no pet zone area or just have some definitely designated areas that when you do resin, you can be able to cover it up completely. Um, if there's a lot of hair floating in the air, uh, that may be one of those things where you turn off fans, you turn off the AC, that kind of thing in that particular area. Um, let it settle down for about maybe 12 hours before you go in there and do any resin or even, uh, what Rhonda does when she does big flake coats on those huge countertops is she'll go in there and she'll sweep up the floor and then vacuum the floor. And this this is a big, big workshop area. Um, and then um, she'll go in with fresh shoes and then uh, we'll do her flight coat. But she'll do it like in the evening. And then lock up, leave the room immediately, leave that zone. Nobody goes into that shop for the rest of the night. It's like no-go zone. But they know to turn off the fans and the ceiling, you know, the AC fan, that kind of thing. And... That works out for them. Now, granted, they do an extra step and they do a uh, UTC, the ultimate top coat, on top of their countertops. And so if they do get a particle of hair, they can still cover it up with that. So, but that is some way to help out with that or just make sure you put a cover over your resin really quickly after you've, you know, looked at it, all the reflections from different angles and picked out all the hairs beforehand. So, that's the best advice I can give you. It's tricky. And if she, if it becomes too much of a problem, she might get booted out of the studio, but I hope not. Cause you know, it's, it's kind of nice having her hang here and that's her spot right by the window. <laughs> She's adorable. All right, guys, I'm heading out of here. This was fun. Check out my website, clairelawrence.com where you can find a bunch of different artwork. And hopefully I'm going to have some books up soon with some recipes in there for mixing up different colors. Uh, so I'm working hard on that. And I'll see you later. Oh, tomorrow for the next live, 3.30. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays lives. Later, y'all.